My name is James McCracken Jr. I moved to New York City after getting out of the Navy in 2011. And um, I fell in love with photography and really started focusing my practice around photography. And then from there, it kind of has expanded. You know, I grew up on construction sites with my father and in junkyards, here in the junkyards and trash trucks. And so I've always kind of been collecting things and making things. You know, he was kind of an amateur painter. And um, so now I really kind of consider myself a photo-based artist, but I do a lot of installations, paintings, and sculptures as well. Um, I definitely have a social, like, documentary-based process. Um, and while I was in graduate school, I started kind of conceptualizing this project that I did for Brick. And uh, Brick really kind of opened the doors and gave me the opportunity to pursue what I eventually saw it becoming. And I do remember when, before COVID kind of shut everything down, even taking those introductory classes on learning how to use equipment, because I was going to start checking out all this equipment, and I was going to take a team out to Las Vegas, and we are going to go to the prison and, and do all this work. Um, just I was very impressed with... Um, you know, the, just the, the enthusiasm of the instructors and then, you know, even the person you're checking equipment out from, um, it's just the knowledge and the support and everyone was very interested in what you were working on and wanted to know more and how could they help. So I think it's that, that support for me really helped <laughs> all things considered kind of complete this project. Uh, Brick really kind of opened the doors and gave me the opportunity to pursue what I eventually saw it becoming in a video form using um, archival family footage and addressing the themes that, you know, the video covers. So it's a very, it's obviously a very personal project for me. It's using... Um, archival family footage that my grandfather um, had shot on his Super 8 camera and then I started shooting films, um, I don't know, maybe five or ten years ago using this and there came a time where I realized that my uncle was in prison um, for a nonviolent crime and mandatory minimum sentence. Um, and he, was, it was, he was essentially given a life sentence, a 40 year sentence. and. Um, really thought that I could do something with um, not only all the family footage, but all the letters that my uncle had been writing my mom over the years, which I incorporated, I, I incorporated into the video that I made. You know, as an artist, uh, I've always been very passionate about this. Um, it's very upsetting to me, um, you know, the war on drugs in this country. Um, our for-profit prison systems, um, you know, <laughs> the mass incarceration, um, and I didn't know how to, um, I really didn't know how to make work about this. And I remember I was conceptualizing a lot of this work and I was just kind of putting together ideas. And when I was in graduate school, I had a, a meeting with uh, Carrie Mae Weems, which was transformative because I didn't know what I was doing, but she really came in and she knew exactly what I was trying to say and um, kind of encouraged me to keep going down that route. It's complicated, you know, um, tackling something that's so kind of polarizing and big. Um, you know, I quickly learned that, it, you know, obvi it obviously it's very personal, but um, you know, you know, speaking with my uncle and visiting him, it's like a lot of kind of, we have similar traumas, uh, whether it be substance abuse or um, uh, um, I suffered a traumatic brain injury when I was in the military. So this idea of memory and, you know, looking at these videos and, um, you know, this memory fragmentation. And I really kind of see this as an introductory video. Um, as a beginning, as a first step, um, to start a conversation, to, uh, to continue to make more work about this. 
And what I found kind of so incredible about Brick was the community and the it's the people. You know, you can throw money at a project or, you know, try to support artists, which is great, but it's it's really that support and and, and the people that that are running the programs and then it's the people in the programs. I know I'll keep, I, I do keep in touch with a few of them. Um, and, you know, you really connect with some people's projects or some people's work. Um, so, f- you know, all things considered, I think um, it, it turned out pretty well just being able to bounce ideas off some of my peers. Out of all the horrible things that COVID has brought, it's definitely brought me closer to my newborn son, and you know, I've just kind of spent a lot of time with him. But it's it's given me a lot of time to work from home, and that's kind of what was great about this project too, is because while I didn't get to make shoot a bunch of new footage, which I had planned, I was really able to relook at old footage that I already had. And kind of like, what can I do with this? And it gave me a lot of time to edit, obviously. And you know, so like, what are you thinking? And, like, I, and I'm like, listen, the way it always works for me is like, I'll have an idea and it never turns out that way. It always goes a different direction or something. That's the, you know, it's those beautiful mistakes that happen when you're creating art or, um, you know, well, you know, life happens, you know, COVID happens and then things change. Um, and it, it all works out, you know project evolved for sure but I, I really do see it as just the beginning there's so much more it's it's not a topic that's um, going to be solved anytime soon and it, it there's so much more conversation that needs to be had